So, but no, seriously, if you guys are interested in doing that, it's there. And uh, we just got loaded up with all our store stuff. So the store stuff's going to be coming in the next two weeks. I'm going to do a couple test orders and then, uh, but everything's here. So maybe next week I'll show you guys some of the merch stuff that you can get live on the podcast. Um, but yeah, the, the consult stuff is probably the most significant because as we, you're going to reference it a bunch today when we're talking about it too. So if you find, if you have like other questions or things surrounding this kind of stuff, this is what's nice when you actually get to talk to one of us because we can address your specific thing. Um, because a lot of times people will not, they can't necessarily extract what you said in a different question to apply to their situation, even though it's kind of the same answer. So sometimes it's helpful to get your specific thing answered if you don't, if you find like maybe your exact question hasn't been specifically addressed or whatever. So that that's an option for you guys. Um, so with that kind of teeing up, I wanted to just kind of talk about some of the, maybe some of the general, general things about more wingers in particular, and you can start. Um, you can start with whatever zone you want with the puck, without the puck, whatever, but just some general principles of being effective as a winger. And then maybe a little bit, if you can touch on different winger, like different types of wingers, like different roles for wingers. So we, we talk about, you know, there's certain roles you can have, whatever, a power forward, more of a playmaker, more of a shooter, whatever. Um, but as a, as a winger, there's even like a further breakdown. If you're somebody who maybe plays a more rough and tough, or you're a bigger guy, typically they throw those kind of guys on the wing, but they have other players too that maybe don't play like that, but they're still wingers. So maybe we can address if you're a little bit more or less physical and a little bit, talk about that a little bit if it comes up with the flow. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, so for sure. maybe we'll start with that. Just kind of some general general thoughts about like the foundations kind of, of being a good winger. Yeah, well, okay. I'll just go to that consult that I did last week. Like the number one thing was that stood out to me was that it's the general principle of hockey. Okay. Like, and, and the more that people understand this, it's not, doesn't sound fun, but it's like it common sense. No, nah, maybe not common, but anyways, is it's what you do without the puck is what will, what will help you be around the puck. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, can I, just let me interrupt again. Yeah. Quick, sorry. Just bef even before you get into that, that, this is this is more like a message for parents and even young players. Hockey is not just the skills of hockey. Yeah. And that's really important to understand because everyone gets really hung up on the things you pay attention to that you see in clips and on TSN and the highlights yeah. where someone has a really great display of skill yeah. and people think that's hockey, but that's not hockey. That isn't what the game is. The game is much more when you don't have the puck or the systems, how to think the game, that is what makes you good at hockey. It's not just the skill part. So people need to start to pay attention to that. And the younger you can start thinking in those terms of how to actually play the game properly, or as a parent or coach, you can start to teach that yeah. it's not just about your toe drag. That uh, leaves yeah. you a lot better off in all, all the positions. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. It's, um, yeah. So it's what you do without the puck. And it was very evident with me with this, uh, young guy and, and we're talking i think 12 12 year old kid so um and of course you don't know that you want to play hockey and that's to your point exactly is like what the people practice and you and, and i want to go back to that for a second is because i said that to, to this guy as well i said and you should practice your skills right. you, you want to be the best skater possible you want to be agile you want to be quick you want to be powerful you want to be able to turn on a dime so that's uh and you want to have great balance. You want to be able to perform on those feet, like in any situation, the best that you can. So that's the hands and the shooting and all stuff. You have to do it because if you play a position, if you play your position well, like away from the puck, when you do have the puck, then you can actually do something. So it's, um, you know, it, it's, I it will never minimize being a really good skilled player. But as to your point, having skill without, like it's, it's like having a tool without a toolbox. Right. Um, and that's like a lot of guys play hockey and they've got, they can only do things on pylons or they only can play with a puck a little bit. And it's like, okay, you're missing a whole piece because I mean, beating a dead horse here to, to, to a certain extent, but when you really analyze your game, like just, you know, people over, even overestimate, if you say, how long do you have the puck on your stick in a game? And people overestimate that and say, Oh, maybe uh, three minutes in a game. It's like, no, like, no, not at all. Like a really, really good player will have it a lot less than that. And I don't know what the number is. 
but it's it's less. In fact, I think I think some of the studies are like seven seconds in a game. Most people or some people have the puck on their stick. A good player, maybe ten, mm-hmm. and of course maybe more. I mean, they look at my son's team, and there's you know, it's not three minutes. That's a long right. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so it's like if you don't have the puck, how are you a good player? So I remember, I remember, uh, um like years and years ago when I was uh, working with like the guys like Matt Pumple and Zach Cassian, when they were in their youth, like minor midget and stuff. I remember one of the agents saying, uh, you know, one of the things you got to get better is without the puck. And I go, yeah, 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 I, I agree. And, but when they tell the kids that they say it, like just be better without the puck. And what do, what do you think a 14 year old kid says when they say that? Whatever. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. But they're too nervous to say, what do you mean by that? And then a lot of times the people explain that it's like, well, just without the puck, you got to be better. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's still not an explanation. Yeah, not an so yeah. so they can be confused. So it's, it's, so anyways, the point is when you don't have a puck, what are you doing? And is it, is it effective? So yeah. I, I'm going to give you some things here that help you with that. So yeah. yeah, go ahead. I think the other, I mean, this is a, a, something that's irritating to me too, with scouts and coaches and stuff. They throw out things that like one of my favorite, one of my favorite things is when scouts or team personnel throw out things the kids should work on in the gym like they'll be like you should you know put on 15 pounds of muscle over the summer it's like you don't even know what that means or how to do that work so yeah get your footwork so it's not and and some of the some of the coaches i remember talking to one coach that was was in here he was coaching in uh i think oshawa in ottawa and he was saying how it's not his job isn't to know that your job is to know that. And that's at the coming from like the more professional level, which he's right. You know, at him as the coach, it's not his job to know how to best get you to understand your fitness level and your weaknesses to work on them in the best way. That's your job as a professional. But when the kids are young, it's not their job yet. They don't know the difference. So you have to be able to give them something that actually means something. You can't just say, be better without the puck. That doesn't mean anything. It's too non-specific. So if you want them to learn something, you have to be able to teach them some of that stuff. So before, before you keep going, the, there's two episodes we did in the past and I was just, I was skimming through just to see them. And a lot of people that listen now haven't listened to those. And I think they're really good. The, uh, one was episode 38 and that was how to play without the puck. And that was kind of just a general frame. Some of the things that we talk about today will be repeated in that. And the other one was episode 82 is hockey IQ. And that kind of touched a lot of the same topics because playing when you don't have the puck at whatever position that is understanding hockey and that is which is hockey iq understanding what to do in certain situations with or without the puck that's what hockey iq is and like you said if you don't have the puck more than a minute in a game or more than 30 seconds in a game the vast majority of your time on the ice is when you don't have it and if you're lost then you'll be no good (laughs) right so it's important that you understand that so